Hi everyone and uh, welcome to a new video. So I know it's been a very long time since I last posted any kind of contents. Uh, last video I believe was from the middle of March 2025. And um, uh, well, it's just that I've been, I've been too busy to, to post any kind of content. Uh, some of it was related to work. Uh, had some repairs and I didn't want to spend like two hours making a video when I do the repair in uh, in, in in 30 minutes and uh, some of it also has to do to <laughs> wasting time on on games like you probably know that uh, Claire Obscure Expedition 33 came out in in April that's a really great game that I spent a lot of time on, which I highly recommend. Like more recently, I'm playing uh, Hollow Knight Silk Song, which, which just came out, which is also an amazing game. And uh, some of you might know also that now I'm teaching a logic board repair class uh, with iFixit in the US. And uh, the first class did occur in July and I had to prepare everything for, for this class. So it means like creating all the course material, uh, written and oral, making sure that everything was ready. And this also took, uh, took a lot of time and it was a very tiring experience, but it went actually pretty well. We had 15 students, they were, they were all pretty happy. And we're actually doing another one in, in October, like three weeks from now. So, but, this also explains why I don't really have much time to, to, to post any kind of content. And also another thing which has taken a lot of time is uh, a major problem that we have in the MacBook board repair community, which is uh, replacing the ACE controllers on, the, on MacBooks. So specifically, the, here I'm going to talk about the CD3217s, which are the ACE2, the second generation of uh, USB-C controller. Apple calls them ACE, A-C-E, which I, I don't know what it stands for. Uh, they also call them ATC on newer models, like uh, ATC maybe could be Apple Thunderbolt controller, I don't know. But anyway, uh, a major issue that we have is uh, how how do we replace these things so uh, before going into any details i'm going to first show you uh, something this this logic board is from an a2442 that's an m1 pro macbook pro 14 inch and uh what what does it have what, what is special with it well here let me show you. Let me show you. I did replace. I did replace this ACE controller. That's the one that's on the right for the USB-C port, which is alone. You can see its number. It's one uh, AP zero GCS, and I did replace this one with a with a CD thirty two seventeen coming from uh, an A twenty three thirty eight. If you look at the other ones, this one is one uh, AP zero LVS. The other one was GCS. This one is also 1AP0LVS and this one is 1AP0LVS. So these three have not been changed because if you know, if you've already been working on, that, on those devices, you know that coming out of factory, the four USB-C controllers on a, on a MacBook, they all have the same, uh, the same number, uh, the same serial number. So these three here on the, on the left side, I didn't touch they still have the same they, they all have the same number but the, the other one on the right is different so at least that's evidence that i changed it you cannot you're not sure you can trust me that i change it with an a2338 uh controller but believe me uh this is what i did and you and i will explain uh how this works so now let's look at what happens when i try to power this board 
So let's turn this on. Let's turn on the power supply. So I'm going to I'm going to connect oh, this thing keeps falling down. No, it's it's broken, it doesn't hold anymore. So I'm going to connect this here first on the left side. Look at what happens. Mm, we're boosting to 20 volts and we're getting uh, 230 milliamps, which is this is the normal current for this um, for this board when there is no battery connected. Uh, if you already tried, you should know that the board doesn't boot completely because if the battery is not connected and if the board were inside the housing, you would see on the screen the, um, the battery icon, and, uh, which is usually for low battery, but it's also present when there is no battery. So this is uh, what happens on, the, on this side. On the other side, Oops. This is also boosting to 20 volts and 230 milliamps, which is also the normal current. At this point, there will be two categories of people. The, the ones who are not into MacBook board repair and would be like, yeah, okay, what, why, why do I care about this? And then there are people who do log MacBook logic board repair and who would be like, what the fuck just happened? How is that possible? Let me show you something else. I'm going to connect the battery. Boom, battery is charging. Let's do it on the other side. First, let me, I'm disconnecting the battery and reconnecting it because right now it's on. And so I want to turn it off. I put it on the other side and look at that. Boosting to 20 volts, battery is charging. So at this point, if the board were inside the housing, this I, I did I did verify. It would be the device would be turning on completely, no problem. Uh, this is an iCloud lock board, so I cannot test every functionality. But what I did check already is that uh, so of course charging works. We just we just saw it. Uh, we also have. Um, uh, USB USB communication works. This I'm able to check even though the board is iCloud locked because when you start the Mac and you press the um, you keep the, the power button pressed, then you get into the boot options. And when uh, when the drive is connected, the drive is detected, and I I can see the the various operating systems that I can boot from. So uh, USB C USB communication works. Um, Display output works also. This I was also able to check even though the board is iCloud locked. The only thing that I do not know if it works is uh, Thunderbolt speed because uh, I would need to enter macOS for this in order to check whether uh, we're able to get Thunderbolt speeds when we connect to a Thunderbolt drive. So anyway, uh, that's that. So hopefully all the people who who do MacBook board repair should be pretty excited <laughs> by by what I just showed, and uh, you must be wondering how how is that possible. Uh, for those who don't know, this shouldn't be possible actually. So there is there isn't 
a lot of documented evidence on the on the question because people just don't don't post proof of what they do but uh, if you want documented evidence you can watch this video from uh, iboff on youtube it's called exploding macbook ports explain m1 max blah 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 uh in this video which i highly recommend that you watch because it is very interesting he explains why this port the one on the right the one which i just replaced uh tends to die more often than the other ones and uh, he documents the fact that if he takes uh, a c3217 from an a2338 or from an a2159 uh, the macbook just won't work normally I, you, you will get nothing on the usb port no charging not able to power on the board the um, the board will be able to power on from battery once inside the housing and the MacBook will be usable uh, but you will not be able to use the ports and uh, of course you once the battery is drained well the MacBook cannot be used anymore so uh, I believe he also had no USB communication whatsoever on any port in this situation so this is one first piece of uh, documentation about uh, this this thing. The other one would be on the logi.wiki website where there is a very brief paragraph on uh, C3217 compatibility and where all evidence points to the fact that C3217s cannot be swapped uh, like just like that. Uh, due to the fact that they have internal programming and uh, to this day the the understanding about how they are programmed is not clear at all but uh, the the common recommendation was like assume that assume that uh, this C3217 has to be replaced. Well, the only way up to up until today to replace it is to take it from the exact same board, same model, same position, and uh, then it will work. But taking any other would not work. Actually, it it will also work with an A2485. But uh, otherwise, that that was all we could do which is actually very very inefficient and very wasteful because it means that in order to replace that that c3217 i need another board from the same model which is working <laughs> and uh just to get this this ic so that's kind of a waste because these boards they cost in the like if you want a non-working one iCloud locked or well, so non-working one or working iCloud locked would cost you in the in the two hundred dollars just just for this board. So it makes the repair very inefficient and very expensive. More recently, um, since more and more people have figured out that this is an issue, you have some sellers on AliExpress or even Mobile Centrix now does this. They will send you they will sell you the CD thirty two seventeens as a group. Um, so that is, they will sell you all four CD3217s for an A2442 and they will be labeled by position so that you know if this one dies, then you can, you can be sure that you're getting the one for, for that position. But it's also very wasteful because the other ones, they don't die so often, but you have them here and you cannot use them. So finding a solution to this problem is actually uh, very... Uh, I, I believe very important and I, I, I do believe I, I found it because at this point I understand so I, I only tested on this one but I do believe that if the MagSafe one which is on, on this side on the back uh, if the MagSafe one dies I do know how I, I would be able to replace it with a generic one so so that's that um of course i'm going the, the goal of this um, of this series of videos is to explain how this can be done uh, 
or let's see, no, it's more to explain how this works. And then you figure out by yourself how, how it's going to be done, because I have only, by myself, I only experimented on this one. Uh, I, the next step would be, of course, to try and replace the MagSafe one. But uh, by understanding how this works and what has to be modified on the board in order to, to use any CD3217, then you will be able to use any CD3217, which is, which is my goal. Um, what else? I do believe also from just from looking at schematics for newer MacBooks. So, you know, the, the newer ones, they use the ACE3 controller. C3217 was the ACE2. Now we have the SN25, uh, 0, 20, SN25 A23, I believe, uh, on, the, on the newer MacBook Pros or a newer MacBook Airs. I do believe from looking at the schematic that it should work the same, unless Apple did, uh, did anything else to, to block the, the replacement of these chips. Unfortunately, these boards are still too expensive for me to, to buy just to experiment on. So I haven't had the opportunity to experiment on. But once everything is explained, I do hope that people who have access to these boards will be able to, to try and uh, hopefully uh, just, just make a post somewhere saying, oh yeah, the, this method works or this method doesn't work. So that we know for sure. So there will be probably, I guess, two, at least two or three more videos to explain the whole thing. Uh, most probably I will start with the ACE1, that's the CD3215, because uh, this one we understand pretty well, and, this, and for this one we have actually pretty extensive documentation. And it is from this documentation for the CD3215 that I was able to figure out how to, how to solve the problem with the CD3217s. So uh, some, I will spend some time talking about the, the ACE1. Uh, then I will go into, in, in a, probably a, an, another video, I will go into, into more details about the about how, how the solution works for the CE3217s. And um, at some point, I will probably have to address also the question of the, of the ROM, because each, each of these controllers has um, what's called an application code, which is loaded from... The, so these, these, these chips, they're microcontrollers. They have, uh, they have a firmware and they, they're like microprocessors and they need an application code to tell them what what to do and this application code is on an external flash rom which uh, which we call the just the 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 rom and the information about this thing is kind of all over the place because some people will tell you for example here in this case if i want to replace this cd3217 then i have to replace it from the same model same position but also I have to replace the ROM. Some people will say, oh no, you don't have to replace the ROM. Well, I will, have to, I will address, address this and uh, I'll just give you right now my conclusion, which is most probably you don't need to replace the ROM unless it is defective. Because here, what I did is I, I, used, uh, I used a C3217 from an A2338. I did not replace the, the ROM and uh, it, it still works. But I did have to do uh, to make other modifications, very slight modifications on the board in order for, for this to work. So I will probably ad address this also. Anyhow, uh, so see you in another video, which uh, see you in part two. So thank you for watching. And I hope I got you pretty excited about this. <laughs>